Well, I'm going to preach today. There's no big shot evangelist here. It's just the old shepherd's back. <laughs> amen. Praise God. So it's, amen, no more sushi for a little while. It's meat and taters again. Amen. Thank God for meat and taters, though. It's what I grew up on. If you got your Bible, open them to Luke, the 24th chapter, and I got quite a lengthy reading, but there was just no other way to do it. So I will not apologize. I will just read it because you need to read the Bible anyway. Amen. Praise God. This is your daily Bible reading today. Amen. Thank God for uh, the Bible. Amen. The 13th verse, it begins... And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem, about three score furlongs. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. And he said unto them, What manner of communications are these that ye have one to another as ye walk and are sad? And the one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered and said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem and hast not known the things which are come to pass in these days? And he saith unto them, Everybody say, What things? That, that's how important Jesus thought it was. It wasn't about the pain or the suffering. It was about what was in front of him. And he said, what things? And they said unto him, concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet mighty indeed in word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Yea, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulcher. And when they found not his body, they came, saying that they had also seen a vision of angels which said that he was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulcher and found it even so as the women had said. But him they saw not. Then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning, everybody say, and beginning. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And they drew nigh unto the village whither they went. And he made as though he would have gone further, but they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them, and it came to pass as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and break it and gave to them. And their eyes were open and they knew him. And he vanished out of their sight. And they said one to another, did not our heart, everybody say our heart. Everybody say burn. Did not our heart burn within us while we talked with us by the way and while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the eleven gathered together and them that were with them, saying, The Lord is risen indeed and hath appeared to Simon. And they told what things were done in the way and how he was known of them in breaking of bread. And they, the 32nd verse one more time, And they said one to another, Did not our heart burn within us? while he talked with us by the way, and while he opened to us the scriptures. Amen. I want to preach for just a little while, maybe a message you'll never forget, 
for the rest of your life. I'm going to preach about heartburn today. Amen. Set your Bibles down. And I need some prayer warriors to help me pray that God's going to help us in this house. Come on, lift up your voice in the name of Jesus. God, we ask you to help us right now. You see every life that's here. You know every need that's represented, God. I pray that you would touch people, that you would encourage people, that you would lift people up, God, that you would strengthen people in this house. God, that you would give us a desire to have more of you. Hallelujah. Come on, pray that prayer, God. Help my desires today. Lord, less of this world, less of this world, and more of you, God. Let our hearts burn. Come on, for just another moment, church, just cry out to God. Hallelujah, we love you, Jesus. We praise you. Hallelujah, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Why don't everybody clap your hands to Jesus now? Thank you, Lord. We praise you. We praise you. Amen. You can be seated. Thank you for standing. Amen. I'm going to preach about heart burn today. Amen. This is what the Lord began to deal with me about a couple days ago. And maybe it's just a little Bible study. Amen. But I want to preach to this church today about the direction that we need to be going and the things that we need to be pursuing. Amen. This story, the backdrop of this story is that it happened on Resurrection Sunday. And there was two disciples that had been in Jerusalem that were very familiar with Jesus and obviously the story of Jesus, but uh, after such a, you could say, a disappointing weekend in their life uh, with so many hopes that had been dashed and so many of their dreams that had been turned upside down, uh, and then to think maybe he is going to rise again, but then to hear the story that uh, the tomb was empty but we did not find Jesus. And so maybe uh, all these things, these uh, uh, situations all began to come to a head and they uh, began to leave Jerusalem, the Bible tells us, and they're heading to a place called Emmaus. These two people, we know the man named Cleopas, and most uh, historians believe that the other person that was with him was probably his wife, who was one of the Marys. She was one of the Marys that was at the cross that was mentioned in John, the 19th chapter, when Jesus begins to speak to his family. She is there. Uh, this man, Cleopas, was uh, the brother of Joseph, which if uh, Jesus would have had a dad, that would have been his dad, if I could just say it like that. Uh, it was Joseph, the carpenter's brother. And so these two people would have been his aunt and his uncle by earthly terms, and they would have been very familiar with him and everything and every promise. But somehow uh, this weekend had just taking the air out of them, you could say, took the hope out of them, and they're on a journey back to Emmaus, leaving the, the promise uh, of Jerusalem. And the Bible tells us that this journey is about a seven-mile journey. And this, this is another reason I believe this was a husband and wife is because that on the way to uh, Emmaus, Guess what they're doing? They're talking about everything that had just happened. Amen. That's what a good marriage, praise God. Maybe I'll just preach about marriage for a while. Amen. It, you, ought, you ought to converse with one another and talk with one another. Amen. That's one of the 
uh, funnest things to do is on the way home from church talk about what good church it was and who got blessed and and all the blessings that happened and this is just normal uh, life situation and so uh, in this time we know that uh, it was not a happy situation it wasn't praise the Lord we just uh, got a raise on our job and, and this blessing and that blessing but on this particular walk to Emmaus, it was not a happy walk. This was a sad walk. Amen. And thank the Lord for a good companion that will walk with you on the happy roads and on the sad roads. Praise the Lord. Well, this is good preaching right here. Praise God. You know what that means? You don't trade them in when you start walking down the sad road. Amen. Praise God. I'm going to preach a little while. All of a sudden, when they begin to talk about everything that happens, the Bible says that Jesus just appears and begins to walk down the road with them. Now, typically, now I, I'm, I live in 2020. If I was walking down the road and somebody just appeared, I'm going to try to figure out who they are and what they are and why are you walking so close to me and whether you're packing or not and what you're up to and all these things. But in these days, everybody just walked everywhere. And there was just, and as you were walking, if the people walking one path, they would just talk and converse. And when they got there, they would go their own way. And so it wasn't anything odd that somebody would just join up with this couple and begin to talk with them. And so when Jesus begins to... Uh, converse with them, the Bible says that he begins to ask them, what are you talking about and why is it that you are so sad? Now, I've got to tell you that Jesus, the Bible said that their eyes were holding. He did this on purpose so that they could not tell who he was, even though they would have known him for sure if he would have been in the form of the carpenter's son they would have known exactly who Jesus was. Mark said it like this. He appeared in another form. So I don't know exactly how he appeared, but they didn't recognize him that he was Jesus, but he began to talk to them, and he did this on purpose. Amen. Praise God. Everything Jesus does is on purpose. Amen. He, he didn't want them to just stop and and bow down and begin to worship him and, and talk about it. He had a purpose that he wanted to appear to these two disciples on the way to Emmaus. And he begins to talk to them, what are y'all talking about? Why are you so sad? Amen. Praise God. Did you know the Lord is interested in what you're talking about? Praise God. I'm not talking about when you're in church. I'm talking about when you walk out of church and you're on the way back to the village or Malvern or Benton or where, whatever direction you come from. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. And then you know if you're sad, he wants to know why you're sad. Yeah. Praise the Lord. And they began shocked. This is another reason that I believe that this was a couple because the man opened his mouth real fast and began to say, are you a stranger here and you don't know what's happened? Even a stranger in Jerusalem the last three days would have known that something bad had happened. And Jesus answered simply, what things? What things happened? Praise God. That's how important it was to him. What things just happened? And all of a sudden, these two disciples began to talk to Jesus and tell Jesus what happened to Jesus. <laughs> they began to tell Jesus that Jesus had been cru crucified and that Jesus had been tormented and Jesus had suffered and and now it was the third day and there was people going to the tomb and open it up and there was no body and, and they were kind of sad. And I think at this point, Jesus had had about all he could take of this. And 
and he slightly reprimands them. Praise the Lord. Please don't reprimand me. Please don't say anything bad to me. Praise God. Jesus slightly reprimands them and calls them kind of a little name that I don't even let people call other people. And he begins to tell them, why did you not believe the prophets? If you would have believed the prophets, you would have known what was happening right now. And in Luke, the 24th chapter and the 27th verse, the Bible says, and beginning, everybody say, and beginning, and beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Look what Jesus does. He begins to teach the people who don't even recognize who he is. He begins to teach them about himself. What does he teach them? Out of the Reader's Digest? No, he didn't bring a cereal box with him to read. He began to preach to them out of the Old Testament. Where did he begin to expound Scripture unto these two disciples? The Bible said beginning at Moses. Guess who wrote the first five books of the Bible? Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. It was Moses. Now think about this for just a minute. I, I hope this is okay. This is just old-fashioned Bible study. Uh, now think about what Jesus does when he's got a disciple who don't know anything about who he really is. Uh, he takes out the Bible and he goes to the very beginning of the Word of God. Uh, from the words of Moses and from that point he begins to preach Jesus. Oh, I've come to preach to the church. We don't need to get fascinated uh, with end time prophecy. Uh, amen. Most of it don't even know who Jesus. I said most of them don't even know who Jesus is. Uh, most of them think he's got one third uh, of all power in heaven and earth. Uh, but the Bible said all power uh, in heaven and earth uh, is given unto the name of Jesus. Oh, I'm going to preach a little while. I hope you're ready. When you get ready to study the Word of God, you need to start from the beginning and go to the end. You know why the flesh don't want to start at the beginning? Because at the beginning... He shot from the beginning the flesh has got to get on an altar the flesh has to get its sacrifice right oh tell me a beautiful story give me a good revelation uh, tell me about the three horses uh, tell me about the vial tell me about this uh, you know what I'm going to tell you about uh, I'm going to tell you who Jesus is uh, he's the rock of all ages uh, he's the one uh, that followed them in the wilderness uh, let me tell you who Jesus is Come on, church. Uh, I'm going to preach to you a little while. Uh, it's time for us to reverse our thinking. Oh, yeah. Hey, man, people get so fascinated about people that can tell you all this stuff about what the seventh moon's going to be and, and all this blood and all that. Uh, but you take them back to the book of Genesis uh, and they couldn't tell you a mountain from a molehill. Well, praise God, do you want to get taught like Jesus teaches? Oh, I feel like preaching. You know what? I believe there's a spirit from hell that wants to get people's minds thinking on the wrong things and things they shouldn't even... And get so wrapped up in things that don't even matter. You say, why does it not matter? Well, I'll tell you why it don't matter to me. Because I'm about to get raptured out of here. Hey, man, I'll let somebody else worry about the horses. And 
Hey, man, if I see a horse, I'm still going back to church. Hey, if he pours it out upon me, I'm still going back to church. Hey, come what may, I made up my mind. I'm going to heaven. And if I go before the tribulation, I'm going to be at the altar. If I go halfway through the tribulation, I'm going to be at the altar. If I go at the end of the tribulation, I'm going to be at the altar. If I'm laying in a casket, I'm going to be at the altar. However it works, I got to be saved. Come on, let's love Jesus right now. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. I, I'm sorry, I'm in a rut and I can't go no further. You think the Spirit of God is giving a, tr giving a Trinitarian a, a revelation about the end of time? Don't you think he would give him a revelation of who he was? Do you really think if God moved upon somebody, he would move truth upon them? Praise God. Hey Amen. It's time to get off of YouTube and get back in the book. I said there is a sequence uh, to living for God uh, and learning the things of God. Uh, amen. It takes a man and a woman opening up the book. Yeah. Praise God. Man, the first thing I did when I got the Holy Ghost, yeah, I had never read the Bible in my life, didn't know the first thing about it. But I got me a Bible and I turned it to Genesis 1 and 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. And I read from Genesis uh, all the way through the Old Testament. Uh, amen. Then I read the New Testament. Uh, and then I opened up my Bible again. I went back to the book of Genesis. I said I started with Moses' writings, uh, and I went all the way to the end. Uh, you know what it did for me? It gave me an, a foundation. I said it gave me a foundation that now I can open up my Bible to the book of Ephesians uh, and I can understand what they're talking about. Hey man, the Bible said the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. Living for God, it, it's like a sunrise. It's got a beginning. It's a beginning. And it's a little bit dark. But the more the sun rises, the brighter it gets. But you, get, you don't start at noon. Well, you shouldn't. Praise God. Amen. Well, praise God. Yeah, you ought to get up before then. Praise the Lord. Boy, I'm off on some rabbit trails. Let me tell you, there is a sequence to living for God. And if you don't know who Jesus is, what good does it do to try to tell somebody how they ought to be dressing? Oh, yeah, praise God. Praise God, praise God. Boy, I'm plowing right now. The devil don't want me preaching this. But I'm going to preach. Guess what the Bible said Jesus began to do? He began to preach about himself. He began to preach about himself which means when people walk through the door, they don't need to hear everything they need to do. Yeah. Hey Amen. When you're witnessing, you don't... I, when, you, when, when you got somebody new, it ain't, well, brother, you're going to have to change this. Uh, you're going to have to do this. Uh, you're gonna, you know what the first words out of your mouth ought to be? Let me tell you about Jesus. Yeah. Let me tell you about a man that'll change your life. Let me tell you about a Savior that'll take you from sad to happy. 
Oh, I'm going to preach to the church today. It's time for us to get our sequence right. God, give us wisdom in Calvary Pentecostal Church. The one that wins souls is wise. Praise God. Everybody say there's a sequence. If you began to teach something, out of sequence, you're going to cause confusion. Praise God. That's why God has a written word. And that's why God puts a pastor in the church that understands the sequence of where people are at. Praise God. And if the church gets out of sequence. And we began to judge people. Oh, praise God. And we began to instruct people out of sequence. And you destroy somebody. Let me tell you, it's not going to be good for that individual. Let me tell you something real safe that you can teach to people. Jesus. You can't ever go wrong just preaching Jesus. Man, I was at the old building, been there, I don't know, a few months. And, uh, you, you know, it just takes wisdom. Praise God. It takes wisdom. And I was learning this lady come in. And she had this whole list of things. And she said, I want you to give me scripture for why your women don't wear pants. And why you, you, they don't cut their hair. And why men do this. And why y'all preach that. And why? Amen. So I was full of zeal and I sat down. And I opened up the scripture which does not lie. And it's accurate. And it's truthful. And it's a sword. And I began to show her every scripture, every question that she had. And guess what? She walked out of my office. uh, And I don't think she ever came back to the church. And I began to pray. And God began to deal with me about a sequence and I vowed that day, hey, man, if you walk in this church with a hundred questions, I'm not going to answer one of them till you get the Holy Ghost. It don't matter if you ain't got the Holy Ghost anyway. Right. You know what I'm praying, God? Give me one more chance with that lady. God, before I go off into eternity, uh, before she goes off into eternity, I pray she walks back in one more time because I'm going to preach Jesus. Uh, I'm going to preach joy. Uh, I'm going to preach peace. Uh, I'm going to preach deliverance. Uh, I'm going to. Man, and you know what I need the church to preach? Jesus. He got up. Help us, God. I'm telling you, we're dealing with babies. Precious little babies. Precious little babes in Christ. Can you imagine somebody taking a sword and just cutting them in half? I'm going to preach. I'm I'm asking for some people to join me. Don't work against me. Work with me. Work with me. Work with me. Amen. You may be praying one, trying to get somebody to change. Guess what I'm doing? I want them to change as bad as you want them to change. 
But guess what I'm doing? I'm getting under this pew right here. And I'm saying, God, I wish you would just convict them right now. Because there's a time when words from me would cut them in half. And, and words from you would cut them in half. And they'd run away. We'd never see them again. But when God begins to convict them and they say, hey, what do you think? God's been dealing with me about this. I hope this is okay. This is so winning 101. And Jesus begins to teach about himself. Praise God. Even though they didn't know it was Jesus, it was Jesus preaching about himself. And he begins at Moses, he begins to preach about the scriptures of the Messiah. The very first scripture, the messianic scripture is what they call them in your Bible is in Genesis, the third chapter and the 15th verse. The Bible says, and I will put enmity, that means hostility, that means, I don't know what it means, fighting, it ain't good. Enmity, opposition between thee and the woman. He was talking to the serpent. And between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. If the Bible is right, and it said he started at Moses and preached the scriptures about himself, the very first scripture he mentioned to them was this scripture. Praise God. He was telling him that Jesus Christ, which came from the woman, was going to suffer. But the difference is his suffering was going to be temporary. And the serpent was going to suffer. Uh, but it ain't going to be his heel. Uh, it's going to be his head. Uh, which means it ain't going to be a temporary suffering. It means the devil was going to be defeated at Calvary once and for all. I'm telling you the first thing people need to know when they walk through that door, brother, you're in a temporary place right now. The trial you're going through is a temporary trial, but I can tell you about a God that if you get this Holy Ghost. Lift your hands to the Lord together right now. Help this church, Lord, today. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, join up with somebody right now. Ina mahataya da hasaya. Hallelujah. 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 If the Bible is right, and I know it is, the first thing he began to preach to these two disciples was... Everything that you've seen this weekend was temporary. That was just my heel being bruised. Uh, 
But while my heel was being bruised, uh, the reason it was bruised uh, is because I had it on the neck uh, of your enemy. Uh, uh, the one that wants to take you to hell, uh, I put my foot uh, on his head. Uh, Come on, church. Uh, amen. I come to preach to you a little while. Uh, amen. Whatever the trial is, uh, it too shall pass. Uh, it's temporary. Uh, but, but God is forever. Come on, let's love Jesus right now. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. Amen, Moses. The prophet said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. The prophet Isaiah said, For unto us a child is born. This is what the Bible said Jesus taught to the two disciples. The scriptures of the prophets about himself. For unto us this child is born, a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. These are the words that Jesus was teaching to these two disciples. Praise God. When you began to hear scripture and it begins to open up your understanding, they began to realize that Jesus was more than just a prophet. You remember the time that God gave you the revelation. It settled in your mind that Jesus ain't what the Trinitarian taught you he was. Jesus ain't what the Pharisee taught you that he was. Jesus ain't what the Sadducees taught you that he was. But Jesus was God manifest. Manifest in the flesh. Hey Amen. When you get that revelation, uh, things in their minds begin to go. Never heard this before. Never seen this before. Their minds were spinning like a top. You can imagine the seven-mile walk from Jerusalem to Emmaus was like a, praise the Lord, kind of like when you got a good preacher here. And time flies. You think, is it already 12? And the preaching was so good that day. They said, why don't you just come stay and stay with us? We want, we want to hear some more. They constrain him to come stay. Now, mind you, this is his uncle and aunt, but they still ain't figured out who he is. And he sits down. He begins to take that bread. No doubt, he began to say some of the same words that they'd heard Jesus say at other meal times. They began to recognize the way he acted and his obedience. And, and there was something that triggered their mind. And this ain't just some old stranger been walking with us. <laughs> this ain't just some old wild preacher walking with us all day long. This is Jesus. 
And when they recognized that it was him, the Bible said that he vanished. Messed up that sermon. Should have put your blinders on. Quit worrying about who was preaching. Praise God. And this couple, after he vanishes, they begin to talk again. Realizing we just got preached to. I understand what the cross was about now. That was his heel being bruised. I understand what that cross was about now. It was him putting his heel on the neck of the devil. I understand now that my little baby nephew that was born in that stable in Bethlehem, that was the mighty God. He wasn't just a little prophet. He wasn't just a good preacher. That was the everlasting father. When he opened the scriptures, this is what they said. Boy, I should have known something. Didn't our hearts burn? Now that I think about it, honey, when he started saying all that, what did you feel? Heartburn. <laughs> they got to talking. We should have known something was going on. Because when he began to take that scripture, not what the watchtower sent to him, not what some organization sent to us on Sunday morning told us to preach. But when Jesus started preaching to us, our hearts begin to burn. Oh, God. Let me tell you something, church. The Word of God will begin to work on the inside of somebody. When you can't see it, <laughs> he's working. When you don't know it, the word of God said it will not come back void. It will accomplish heartburn. <laughs> it's, let me tell you something about something burning in your heart. You can't ignore heartburn. Well, praise God. I'm, uh, give me five minutes. I'm going to preach a little while. When I got, when my daddy died when I was 21 years old, 22, I didn't have the Holy Ghost. And, uh, and I kept everything inside, and I was tough, and I didn't cry. And uh, about a few days later after the funeral, I lived in B.B., Arkansas, and I was laying on the couch Healthy young man, lifted weights, did all the stuff. I ate fried chicken, but I did everything else right. All of a sudden, there was something right there. I never felt in my life. I thought, what on earth? And I just dealt with it a day or two. And uh, I thought, my goodness. I think I talked to my wife, said, what on earth is that? And she told me, that's probably heartburn. I didn't believe her, so I went to the doctor. So anyway, I went to the doctor and I said, man, after I eat milk gravy and fried eggs, there's something right there. And it don't feel good. You know what the doctor said? He said, Is any, have you gone through anything stressful lately? Yeah, I just buried my dad three days ago. He said, well, that's called heartburn, son. You'll take this little deal or whatever. But let me tell you something. I don't care if you're 21 or 121. You can't ignore that. 
whatever it is. I still don't know what it is. I don't have it anymore except every now and then when people get to acting not right. I'll let you think a while and I'll sit here and catch my breath. I don't know where it got the name, but when I looked up the scripture in the Bible, when they said, did not our hearts burn? The word heart was cardia, which means heart. And burn comes from a word that means burn. No great revelation. When Jesus began to preach scripture on the outside, something on the inside began to get all stirred up. Let me tell you about preaching. Uh, it'll stir people up. Uh, that's why you got to beg people that ain't living right to come to church because uh, they know when they get there, they're going to get heartburn. Uh, hey, you know what I want to do? I want to give my whole city a bad case of heartburn uh, because they need the Holy Ghost. Come on, lift your hands to Jesus right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell Tell you what anointed preaching will do. It'll deal with the inside. It'll start making people uncomfortable. On the day of Pentecost, when the preacher began to preach, you crucified the Savior. You did this, you did that, you did that. Guess what happened? They got heartburn. The Bible says they were pricked in their hearts. Preaching began to prick their heart. Oh, God, you know what I fear? You know what makes me fearful? It's when you can preach to people and they're unmoved. And you can preach to people that are playing around with things on the Internet they shouldn't be. And there's no burn. When it's Sunday morning, they... It's time to go to church. And they'd rather lay in the bed. There's nothing in them burning to make them get up and go to God's house. He kind of will see. When you preach to people, sir, ma'am, you got to let the pastor be the pastor. And they're unmoved. And God sends a man of God that don't know anything about anybody. And he preaches about a root of bitterness that's going to destroy you and send you to hell. And people sit there with roots of bitterness and they're unmoved. The Bible says their conscience Conscience has been seared with a hot iron. And the Word of God can't give you the burn anymore. God help this church in the fear of God. I'm telling somebody. Uh, you better get the walls out of your life. You've allowed the walls to get so high that the preach word of God can't go over. He can no soto. 
And if the word of God can't begin to burn you, if the word of God can't humble you, if it can't get you at an altar, the very next available thing is tragedy. God chose the foolishness of preaching to save them that were lost. But I've seen people, I've seen friends of mine uh, that the preaching could not penetrate. They had gotten so hardened, the word could not penetrate them. And what God, you took the tool out of his hand that he loves to use. God chose preaching. God wants to preach and you come to an altar. God loves you so much that he don't want you to burn in hell that if it takes him uh, turning your world upside down, God will do it. Why God? Why God is all this trouble? Don't, don't blame God. Don't blame God when the prophets, when the evangelists, when the pastor, when the men of God, when the good people of God have given you good counsel and they've spoken to you, they poured their heart out to you and you would not listen. Don't blame God when trouble happens. It'd be like the disciples on the way to Emmaus. Preacher, don't quit preaching to me. Will you please come in? Will you please stay here a little longer? The opposite of our world today, it can endure sound doctrine. When you began to preach the fear of God, they're playing on Facebook on their phone and wonder what. Oh, shatala bahasataya. Come on, help me pray right now, church. God, God, I'm going to see God give me that burn. God, give me that fear of you. God, give, I want it like it used to be. Come on, church, I'm through preaching. I preach what God's laid up on my heart. It's up to you now. Except a man is born of the water and the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Come on, church. Somebody, you're lukewarm in your spirit. God sees right through the show. He sees right through the lip service. He sees right through the act. He's looking down deep in your heart. God, I'm going to In the name of Jesus, I'm asking people in this church, you need to pray until the Holy Ghost comes upon you. You need to pray until the Spirit of God begins to change your very being. God, I want that burn. God, don't let me lose it. I don't want it to be a Sunday as usual. Oh, my son, I don't want you to have to. I don't want trouble, God. I don't want you to have to humble me, Lord. I want to humble myself. Come on, I feel the fear of God in this house. No, 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 God in your name. 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 
in your name. Come on, church. Why don't everybody find a place to pray? Why don't you humble yourself? Come on, he said, you can either fall upon this rock and be broken, or this rock will fall upon you and it will grind you to pieces. Come on, church, I want to see you blessed. I want to see God touch you. I want to see God use you. I want to see God heal your body. I want to see God answer your prayers. Come on, let God's word touch you right now. Oh, give me that burning desire. Give me that burning desire for the things of God. God, Let me go. Baba Hasaya, Kalabaya. 